Okay, today I'm gonna to explain glazes to you. Um, it could be a little tricky. Uh, so when you make something, this is a spiritual cleansing box. It has been fired one time. That's called bisque, like a biscuit. It's been fired, okay? So this is very porous. It'll absorb moisture very quickly. All right, so when you're still working on your ceramic piece, uh, and it hasn't been fired, that's called greenware, you are going to receive two grades for one project. You're going to receive a greenware grade, so you'll see like plate greenware. That means that you made it, and then it's fired, then it comes back to you, and then you're going to get a glaze grade. And that's because people make things, get it fired, and don't finish the cycle. So you're gonna get two grades, okay? So glazes. Glazes come in containers like so. One is glaze, and one is not, but they look the same. This one right here is not glaze. This is colored clay. It's also called underglaze. So up at the top, it says underglaze. And that's the only way you could tell the difference. This is colored clay. It's not shiny. When you paint it, what you see is what you get. You're not to use these. I keep these away from the glazes. So if you happen to cross one, bring it to me, okay? Now, glazes, as you can see here, the cap is not on very well people do this and then you get it and start shaking it and it goes everywhere. So your responsibility is to make sure the cap is screwed on before you start shaking it. Otherwise it's gonna go everywhere. If that happens, bring it to my attention. These are very expensive. This pint is probably like $20. I'll, I or you will scoop it up off the floor and put it into the jar. If you don't wanna do it, I'll do it because it's a lot of money and I don't wanna waste our supplies. All right, so I shake it up. This is called gingerbread CTL 36. Mm -hmm. So the test chip will be back in the uh, on the wall and it doesn't say gingerbread, it says the number CTL 36. Okay, so some of the newer glazes have on the outside what it looks like after it's been fired, but that's not what you're gonna see when you paint it on. Okay, and there are chunks of glass in here. Sand is a mixture of colorant, sand, and water. Okay, so what happens is that we put the glaze on your piece, we fire it to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. When it heats up, it turns liquid, like a lava. If you're ever walking on a beach and you see um, in the sand a chunk of glass, lightning has struck sand and liquefied that sand. That's basically what happens in the kiln. All right, so these brushes here that have a purple handle, these are our clay brushes, okay? Not to be confused with other paint brushes. You're only to use the clay brushes because what we're using is glaze, it's not paint, okay? Now you might ask, well, if it's not paint, will it come out of my clothes? Yes and no. Does ketchup stain clothes? Sometimes. Will glaze stain clothes? Sometimes. It just depends, but it's not paint, okay? All right, so the chunks of glass inside the crystal glazes they're bursts of color. So if you look here, this is this this is going to be brown with flecks of gold and yellow. So if I dip in here and you can kind of see some chunks, those are chunks of glass. You want that. Those are going to be bursts of color. All right. So you have your piece. Now the first coat is pretty easy. You're just going to brush it on any kind of like cracks or whatever you want to get in those ridges really get in. Whatever you don't paint, no magic will happen. Like it'll, you'll have bald spots. Okay. So I paint, pretend that I've just like glazed this whole thing. Okay. Could I see your pinch pot? On the bottom of your pieces, you'll have an X and a circle. Do not paint that with glaze because we need to put this in the kiln. And if you have glaze on the bottom, it's going to stick and you'll get your piece back, but it'll be in, in pieces. Now, let's just say you accidentally get some glaze on the bottom. What you do, you're gonna get a sponge and you're going to wipe that off. Okay, very, very important. I cannot fire, if you have glaze on the bottom, I can't fire it, okay? All right, so layer one dries very quickly. Layer two, okay, so we put a layer on, let it dry completely. When you, How you know it's dry, it'll get chalky. So you can see this is wet and that's kind of dry, 
Okay, so the second layer, what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip into your glaze and you're gonna hit it and quit it. Dip and dab, dip and dab, dip and dab, okay? What you don't wanna do is this on your second coat. Painting it, I'm painting it. No, no, what you're doing is you're lifting up layer one, okay? And you're gonna have bald spots. So dip and dab, okay? And you can really see the chunks. You can really see the chunks for the crystal glazes. Don't pick those off, those are good. You want those, those are bursts of color. If you don't want bursts of color, then choose a different glaze. Now remember, this is not what the color is going to look like when it's fired at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be A, shiny, and it's going to be, it's gonna look like the outside of the glaze bottle. Unless you have an old glaze or underglaze, um, the underglaze is what you see is what you get. You paint this, it'll look just like this, but we're not working with that just yet. Um, if it doesn't have the outside picture, you could look at my test chip or you could ask me, but it's kind of um, common sense. Like if it says blue, then it's probably a shiny blue. If it says like celestial blue, it's a type of blue. So you're not gonna paint celestial blue and come out with a pink, okay? So, um, but that the important thing to remember is that it will be shiny, meaning that glaze makes your piece impervious to water so you'll be able to eat out of it, drink out of it, put it in the microwave, put it in the dishwasher, put it in the oven, okay? And it's non-toxic. We do not use glazes that have lead in them. All right, now the third layer. As you can see, the second layer is taking a little bit of time to dry. It's just a part of the process. So if you hurry this process and put your third coat on or your second coat on prematurely and you don't let it dry, the clay will tell on you. And in this case, the glaze will tell on you and you'll have bald spots. So I won't be able to look at this and tell like, oh, uh, you have three layers. I can't, I can't look and tell. But when it's fired, I'll be like, oh, they only put one coat on. Or I can tell that you put your coat on before it dry because you'll have bald spots. It's very, it's very obvious. Okay, so the third coat, let's just pretend like this is dry. The third coat, and which is the final coat, is a dip and dab, dip and dab, okay? It's a lot, very chunky, all right? Then when you're finished, this, while it's still wet, can go in the back room into the yellow cabinets, set it in there, make sure your bottom is clean, and then I'll know if it's back there, that means you're ready for it to be fired. If you're not ready for this to be fired, don't put it in the back, put it in your cubby. Okay, after I fire things and I put it on the cart and that means it's ready for you to pick up. Okay, um, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, so three coats. So you might say to yourself, well, you know what? I'm gonna use a gingerbread for coat one. You know what, let me try white for my coat two and my coat three, I'm gonna only use black ice. Miss Smith, what will that make? I have no idea. This is chemistry. I don't know. Write down what you use for all your coats. So that way, if you have something fabulous turn out and someone says, how did you get that color? You could be like, oh, I used white, black, gingerbread. But if you don't write it down, then we don't know. Also, it might come out terrible, not what you wanted. And you're like, okay, those are not good colors to use together. Now you say to yourself, self, I just want it to look just like this. Okay. Then layer one, layer two, layer three. Okay. Any questions? Your brushes, when you're finished, don't put them in the water basins and leave them. You're going to take this to the sink, wash it with soap and water, and then it goes back into the clay brushes upright. Okay. If I have to, I will assign you specific paintbrush numbers. I don't want to do that. I do that with my painting students. So be mindful that this is a shared studio space. Does anybody have any questions?